What's up guys and welcome back to my garage. If you're enjoying this series, make sure you leave a like on the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. In the last episode, we attempted to make a little journey out to the upholstery shop so we could finally acquire the red interior for this El Camino. And I don't know why, but I just felt like I had to make a quick pit stop at a little haunted mansion. And well, I'm pretty sure that I brought back some demons with me. Let's just roll the clip. What? Yeah, so that happened, which was great, but thankfully I was able to get in a quick save just before we took off to the upholstery shop, so everything is completely fine. Obviously, we do still have to reacquire that red interior today, but I'm not going to be driving the El Camino. It kind of seems to have some bad juju and always seems to get in an accident specifically on this side of the vehicle. So what I'm going to be doing instead is something many of you have been suggesting for a very, very long time, which is acquiring a beater vehicle. Basically just a vehicle that we can drive wherever we want and something that we don't really have to take that good of care of, right? So let's see what we're working with. In the dealership today, we've got two NIVs. It looks like that one might have some suspension issues. Ooh, yeah, like the main uh, cross member there, sort of the subframe for the vehicle. Kind of looking a little rusty. Again, I don't really care about the condition of the vehicle since it is just going to be a beater for us. But I would like it to at least drive sort of nicely. I don't want to get stranded somewhere. That just needs a new valve cover. And it looks like, again, has some worn out suspension components. Not terrible, though. For an NIV, not terrible. And then we have a Bart, or maybe a Chad. I still, to this day, I still cannot tell the difference between the two. This is a Bart. We've got three-star rust condition. Okay, I mean, it could, it could probably classify as a beater. Oh, it's got a V8 in it. Does have a bad valve cover, bad alternator, and another very, very rusted out subframe. But as long as we take kind of good care of the thing we might be able to just flip it after we're done using it and and clean up some of the rust quick respray you know how we do kind of leaning more towards this guy wait can we can we actually sit in them and no we can't fire them up before we actually purchase okay let's just buy the thing eleven and a half thousand buckaroonies there we go that puts us down to twenty seven thousand but again like i said as soon as we're done using it, assuming it's still in relatively good condition, we might be able to just flip it for uh, for a couple of bucks. But let's hop in, old girl. We'll see if she fires up. Hopefully she does. Come on. Okay, we're good. We're good. Major exhaust leak. Let's actually just take it over to the shop really quick so we can go through it a little bit better and make sure that it's actually up to the task of driving all the way out. To that upholstery shop it's it's a pretty good pretty good ways away from us Let's see if we can sneak it in here without damaging the el camino i gotta get that thing moved too but uh we'll just leave this right here in the shop and uh we'll pull this alongside of the uh the side of the garage again all righty one of the first things that i noticed on this vehicle is actually a slightly deflated driver's side higher over here so we're just gonna get that aired up and while we're while we're on it we'll make our way around the rest of the tires and uh just make sure that they are all ready to go as well now that that's out of the way the other thing that i'm kind of concerned about is the exhaust we have a major major exhaust leak oh one of the cylinder heads is bad too i didn't really notice that over inside the dealership but um sw swapping out a header usually pretty simple pretty straightforward i think we can handle that no problem but why is it leaking it was definitely like leaking into the cabin but i don't see any other exhaust issues apart from that that one header so let's grab our wrench we'll just disassemble a couple of things so we can get rid of that leak and then uh, probably just make sure it's it's got all the fluids gas included and we can make our way back out to the upholstery shop yet again
Alrighty, let's start at the top of the list here and we'll just sort of work our way down. There were a few more things that were bad than I originally thought. I mean, we, we knew about the alternator. Kind of sucks that it's 215 bucks, but what do you do, right? What do you do? Then we need the cover with the cap on it or with the lid on it, I'm pretty sure. And then the opposite cylinder head. That thing was actually completely fried. Uh, was it the left manifold or was it the right? I think it was the right one. 161 bucks there. We need a new distributor. A new ignition coil. Intake manifold was good. I'm assuming the rockers are fine. But I believe that should be about everything that we need. Again, it's, it's quite a bit more than I thought initially, but it's all right. Okay, one more thing. We need a new steering box. Right there, 142 buckaroonies. Take a look at the original one. Absolutely dusted. We need we need steering. We definitely need steering. And before you guys say anything, I'm aware the brake master cylinder is also pretty dusted. Who needs brakes? We don't need those things. We just need to go fast and be able to steer. That's about it. And just like that, she is all back together and nearly ready to go. I want to just hop inside again and see if it fires up a little bit quicker this time. Oh, much better. Much better. Okay, let's quickly check the fluids. I'm just going to take the cap off the radiator. Lean in a little bit. Make sure that it does have... Yeah, it does have plenty of fluid. I'd say that's probably enough. And then the Earl. Got to check the Earl. Ooh, that's dirty. That oil's been in there for a minute. Just for the sake of maybe saving this engine, I'm going to change the oil. Just, just really, really fast. And actually, I don't even think we need our wrench for that, if I remember right. We should just be able to, yeah, grab the drain plug and let her eat. We're going to grab three brand spanking new bottles of oil from the Dynaco gas station across the street. And unfortunately, I don't even think we're going to be able to make the journey today. We are going to have to go to bed before that actually happens. It's still going. There we go. Seems like that's all the oil out of there. I wonder if, like, when we go across the street, if it stops sort of rendering the fluid coming out of the oil pan. That very well could be the case. But let's check it now. Just make sure that it is actually bone dry. And it sure is. Cool. Let's take off the cap here from the valve cover then. And in our backpack, we just drop out all three of those new bottles of Earl. And we'll get her filled up. And then we do still have to make sure it has plenty of fuel. Let's get our cap thrown back on that cylinder head. And we'll check it one mo again, as they say. Just to make sure we're actually ready to go. These dang steering wheels, dude. Always blocking the fuel gauge. Let's go ahead and rip the e-brake. Exit the seat and just lean in here. Oh, I'm glad I checked. Dude, it's it's just about on E, so let's uh let's go ahead and hop out here. I Did I pull up on the wrong side? Oh, that's right! It's back here. I completely forgot about that. Okay, fuel tank has seen some things. It's looking a bit rusty there, but let's grab our grab our handle here. Surely it can reach just to the back of the vehicle. You're kidding. Okay. Scoot it forward just a bit. There we go. A lot of work. A lot of work just to get these vehicles fueled up. What's the damage? 61 bones. 61 bones to get it filled up from E all the way to full. I'm actually just going to leave that here because we're going to have to come back across the street in the morning, get some food anyways. Uh, but for right now, we do have to sleep just for a few hours. I don't think that the upholstery shop would be open right now, so maybe just a little bit longer. There we go. Close to 10 a.m. here. We're going to head across the streets, grab some grub, hop in the old girl, and, uh, and we'll set off once again. <laughs>
and dudettes, ladies and gentlemen, we have finally arrived once again at the upholstery shop. I wanted to try to do that entire drive without using the map even just a single time. And there were a few parts there where I was getting a little nervous that I might have taken a wrong turn, but uh, we made it. We made it. So let's quickly grab what we came here for, though we do still have to change the color to red. So I don't think I'm going to end up buying a new saddle for our, uh, our motorcycle, our chopper. I kind of like the black seat that's already on it, but we do still need a new shifter, two new seats, no back seats. And those two door cards right there. But that's it. That's all she wrote. Oh. Yeah, it was a lot easier to carry these back in the El Camino, you know, because it's like half car, half truck, right? It's got the bed in the back. This doesn't have that much space for seats. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do the very best I can. Just try to get it all squeezed on in here. And hopefully we make it back home. You know what? It's actually not that cramped. Everything fit in there pretty easily. Oh, and we have the trunk also. Who needs those? Never heard of them. Now then, we get to start our journey all the way back to the garage. And this time, I'm not stopping at no haunted mansion, all right? I don't, I don't need any demons following us home again. That was really not a good time. Again, we have made it all the way back to the garage without using our map. I realize for a lot of you that play this game like all the time, that's probably not uh, that impressive. But it just it just takes a while to, you know, learn, uh, learn the route. Oh, yeah, I guess I kind of need to get all this stuff out of there. So let's haul all this out of the BART. And then I'm not going to install it just yet. Instead, what I want to do is patch up the rust on on this part and uh, give it a nice respray so we can turn around and sell it shout out to the bart though what a good beater honestly like what a what a great beater for the day now that we've got all the rust ground down and, and sanded nice and smooth color code is zero nine two four six five zero nine two four six five a nice sort of a a navy blue Maybe not navy blue. Almost almost a mix. Oh, we're going to need quite a few more cans, aren't we? Almost a mix between navy blue and uh, and royal blue. I forgot how many like different color panels there were on this thing. Nearly three spray paint cans later, and we finally have a fully complete blue beater. The blue beater Bart is ready for resale. The triple B. See, we've got color condition now five stars, rust condition now five stars. I don't remember what we paid for it. Wasn't it like 11 and a half? 11 and a half thousand. So we've, we've almost doubled our money now on this. Well, we did have to put a little bit of money into it, you know, take that into account. But 22, almost 23,000 buckaroonies, with, which puts us up to 48,000. You guys, we are so dang close to finally purchasing that garage extension. But let's get the Elko pulled in here. 
and uh, we can get going on this red interior swap. I'm really, really excited to see what this is going to look like. At first, I was kind of thinking, like, when, when one of you suggested red interior, I was kind of thinking, you know, that might look a little gaudy, a little corny. But um, just seeing it laying out right there, I'm already sold. Let's grab our wrench. And this is probably the easiest vehicle to actually change the interior of, right? Because it has, it has the least amount of pieces right we just we just have the door cards the seats and then the and then the shifter oh i did miss a little bit of respray here it's fine no one's gonna see it it's just gonna get covered up immediately anyways there should just be one bolt on that guy there we go you guys you guys it looks so good it looks so much better than this beige or like cream interior that it had before. That, ladies and gentlemen, is hot. Kind of matches, you know, the the air filter in the big scoop there. I love it. I love it. So, as for the old stuff, what I'm going to do is actually hop back in the El Camino. And we're going to run this down really quick to the pawn shop guy, which a lot of you were letting me know lately... The uh, the voice actor for the pawn shop guy is another content creator goes by the name of Scapegoat, which I I didn't even know about. So that's that's pretty cool. Wait a minute, dude! I thought he was open from eight to like six p.m. Apparently he's only open eight to noon. That that too looks very suspicious though. It it almost looks like he had a he had an hour change recently, but that's no big deal. We can head back to the garage, take a little nap, and then we can come back down in the morning, get all that uh, all that stuff sold. All right, Mr. Scapegoat, how we doing? How's it hanging? Let's rip the e-brake real quick. I have some. Uh, don't be going using too much Bondo. Now. You don't want me to use too much Bondo? Are you, are you sure about that? Also, peep the fanny pack, dude. I didn't even notice that before. I have a couple of interior pieces for you today. 67 bucks for the other seat. So 44 for one and 67 for the other. Makes sense. A couple of bucks there for the door card. 52 for that guy. And last but certainly not least, our old shifter. 22 bucks. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate the business. Now we can pull our Elko back in the garage with its brand spanking new interior. Looking very very nice and i do think that's where we're going to wind things down at for today so once again if you guys did enjoy please leave a like leave a comment help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button and i will see you in the next one thanks so much for watching guys peace